What's up, guys? Welcome back to today's episode of the Sports Sermon. We are brought to you by Scooch, the most functional phone case on the market. Check out scoochcase.com to get yours today and use the code SPORTS18, sports with a Z, of course, to get a 10% discount on your order. Stay tuned till the end for a special Scooch giveaway as well. But now, today's episode. So we are back today to talk about the Brooklyn Nets. I am Jason Gandhi. I'm joined by Dylan Staggy. I mentioned this Scooch giveaway. Make sure you keep listening to hear about that at the end. I don't want to tell you now. I want to tell you after we can talk about the Brooklyn Nets a little bit. But let's get right into it. D'Angelo Russell and Rondé Hollis Jefferson will be eligible for extensions on their rookie contracts. Dylan, would you extend both, one, or neither of them? I think you've got to extend both of you, the Brooklyn Nets. Those are your two best young talents. I would say that you want to extend Hollis Jefferson on probably a shorter deal, though, um, because I'm still not too sold on him as a solid contributing starter every night. I I think he's a great role player, uh, but I I think he's not going to be one of your core pieces to a championship team. I think with Russell, though, uh, you've got to re-sign him, too, as long as you can. He continues uh, to develop, and, I mean, he is your best young talent. Uh, Also, you'd you'd want to do these deals after um, free agents could potentially sign there. Then you won't extend them. You'll just re-sign them. You won't give them rookie extensions. You can only do those until the the beginning of the season. Yeah, but, I mean, I would say that because you don't want to lose out next summer on um, potential free agents that could come because... Uh, there's been rumors about Kawhi getting someone else and wanting to team up in Brooklyn. And really, I mean, you've got to have these two pieces too, and Russell and Hollis Jefferson, or uh, it would be very hard with just a couple of guys coming out to try and compete. Yeah, so, I think you want them all on your team. Yeah, so I said I wouldn't extend either of them but because I, I would wait until free agency, which you kind of hit on. They will both be restricted free agency. You'll have complete control over them, but the Nets have roughly $65 million in cap space next season right now, so I would definitely try and go get two free agents, but either way, I have every intention of signing these guys, but definitely I would not give them the rookie extensions, because, the extension on the rookie contracts because, like you mentioned, you can wait, see if you get any guys to bite because you can always sign these guys over the cap. I would definitely give both of them not a max deal, obviously, but a good amount of money. I'd probably give D'Lo 15 to $18 million. I'd give Rondé Hollis-Jefferson 10 to 12 probably. I think both are definitely worth it, and they're definitely both parts that need to be on this team. But wait, sign them over the cap once you get a guy like Jimmy Butler, hopefully, or you get a guy that's going to be in free agency next season. But you said you would extend them, but then you kind of went back and forth on that. Would you extend them before the season, or would you wait? Before this season? That's, that's the rookie extensions. You can't extend contracts. Like you can't give them extensions on the rookie contracts once the season starts. Yeah, no, I, I would definitely wait because you, you don't want to put yourself in a situation where you're not a free agent destination, especially yeah. since, um, I mean, they haven't had a lot of young talent to develop because of the draft picks they haven't had these past few years. Yeah, okay, I was just clarifying that. Okay, cool. Uh, let's keep going. The Nets have been very busy in revamping their bench this off season. They take they take on a lot of expiring contracts. Have a lot of ma- made a lot of moves. Do you like the strategy the Nets are taking? Not really getting any stars or big pieces. Just a lot of under the radar guys to hopefully fill in on that bench spot. Yeah, I mean, it definitely would have made too much sense to go out and try to acquire a star for these past uh, few years and even this year to uh, at least through trade. Um, I think it makes sense what they're doing. They need to prepare for cap space next summer to try and make a splash in free agency. Uh, If not, they can just keep taking on uh, these bad contracts and build their team through acquiring draft picks that way. Also this year, they'll have their pick back, so that's a big thing for them. They only have to survive one more year of that Alan Crabb contract, and that's definitely going to be tradable this offseason as it is expiring. I don't think they're going to trade Alan Crabb. I know I'll talk more about the other moves, but just to keep going back to your point there, the Nets love Alan Crabb. They were hell-bent on getting him two summers ago. They couldn't get him because they had restricted free agency with the Net, with the Trailblazers. 
Then they went and got that trade for him. They absolutely love Alan Crabb and think he is an instrumental part to what they're doing. So part of me thinks that he's going to stay there. I think that he is a contract that I would move, but I don't think they're going to. Yeah, I mean, in free agency, though, if a couple of stars want to go there um, and you have to move Alan Crabb, I mean... I don't think you'll have to. They they won't have to. They still have $65 million. That's 35 and 30 one guy takes below the max, and I think you're good. I mean, I, I wouldn't really count on that, though. Plus, it, it'd be a lot harder to build a team around them um, if you have that $18.5 million just sitting there. Yeah, uh, I, I just think, personally, I think Alan Crabb's a good fit for a championship team, but also the Nets like Not, not at $18.5 million, though. I mean, you got to build... You, you, you got to build a team Nets, around it. The Nets love him. I don't. I think they can still build a team. They can still get D'Lo, still get Ronnie Hollis Jefferson. If you get a guy like Jimmy Butler and... I don't know, another free agent's coming off the top of my head. Um, who's going to be a power forward coming off next year? Any idea off the top of your head? Um, not right now. Okay, we'll just say Jimmy Butler. Say they get Jimmy Butler. So, like, then your starting five is going to be D'Lo, Jimmy Butler, Rondé Hollis, Jefferson. Hopefully you get one more of those max free agent guys. And Jared Allen, that's making the playoffs. That's a very good team in the East next year. So, as you check the free agents, I mean, I don't think they have to get rid of Crab to be a very good team come next, fall, next summer because... There will be guys available that you can sign for under the cap to give. Maybe it's Jimmy Butler, maybe it's Kyrie Irving, whoever it is. Uh, good role players, but still being able to keep Alan Crabb if the Nets love him. The guys they did get this year, I want to get into that real fast. They got guys like Kenneth Fareed, Ed Davis, Shabazz Napier. They're all under 30 that could pan out to be something. Then they also traded for Jared Dudley for a veteran presence. They got a lot of guys who can all contribute, but, it'll, but they'll be able to get off of them next summer if they don't. I really like the strategy they did because they're able to really get one-year rentals on a lot of these guys. If they hit, then sweet. If not, no big deal. And then if they hit on their pick next summer as well as sign a free agent or two, this could be the start of something really special and broken. I think this summer is one that you look back to because maybe you get a guy like Shabazz Napier to pan out as a really good backup. Kenneth Reed, Ed Davis, but you've also got D'Lo and Rondé Hollis Jefferson, Jared Allen still producing. Yeah, I mean, the Nets have definitely made moves to make themselves flexible for this upcoming summer. And, it, I mean, if they play their cards right, they could uh, come out of this nicely, especially if free agents want to come there. Yeah, I think them and the Knicks. I know it's weird putting those guys in the same type of conversation, but I think you have to mention them. I think both teams in New York have been kind of down for a while. I think they're two teams that could be really on the up and up come next fall or next summer when free agency is done. Dylan, Brooklyn, like we said, has not been competitive they're still looking for a face. Do they find that face this year, and what are your expectations for the Nets? I wouldn't say face, um, but I, I think D'Angelo Russell is a person on the roster that can become an integral part of a championship team, or a, at least a contender. I think he's o- the only person on the roster that really can be. I, I think for this year, he is going to be the star, the guy that takes all the shots, but I, I really don't think he can be the only guy on a winning team. Uh, so this year, I would say I would put the Nets at 25 to 28 wins and get a fifth or sixth pick in the draft. Yeah, I also agree. I think that they're building a really good core of Ronnie Hollis Jefferson, D'Angelo Russell, and Jared Allen. I think those three can be a really young core to build around. I see Russell and Allen being the focal point all season. While the Nets win probably only 28 to 32 games, they get their lottery pick. Next summer is just very crucial for them. And I think it's really all going to come down to how well next summer goes for them to see what is the future of this Brooklyn Nets franchise. Mm-hmm. Yeah, any last thoughts on the Brooklyn Nets before we end it? Yeah, I mean, they've obviously been working from behind these past few years um, without their draft picks. Uh But, I mean, again, they have played their cards so that they have a ton of flexibility in 2019. uh, That that summer, it's going to be a big one for the Nets. Definitely. So, yeah, that's going to end it. Uh, Check out our YouTube page at The Sports Sermon. Check out our Twitter page at The Sports Sermon. I mentioned a scooch giveaway. Here it is. Well, first off, before I tell you about that, I know I kept teasing it. First thing I want to say is we're changing the Sports 18 code to be from 10% to 15%. We really want you guys to go check that out and use that. So that's going to be the first change I make. Second, what I want to let you guys know is if you comment and subscribe, we will be giving away a free Scooch case. So make sure you definitely do both of those things. Check out all of the Scooch products on scoochcase.com. 
We absolutely love the product, and you guys should definitely get yourself a scooch. That's all we have for today, so thank you for listening, and we will see you guys later. Check out college football, NFL, fantasy football, and more.